Hey everybody, got a quick video for you here from the DVR on my Mixuko in glorious 480p. We set up the MultiGP Ultimate Time Trial 3 track this weekend uh, at the Flight Club. And we had a guy standing there with a stopwatch, but since I had the Red Rotor lap timing system, I went ahead and set it up and did some tests. This system is really coming together. Uh, when I got the very first test units, there were some false triggers from the sun, but I got no false triggers in a whole day of flying here. You can see in the lower left, the timer is rolling after I pass through the start gate. And uh, don't don't critique my time too fat much here because I was really feeling this track out. It's the first time I flew it, no practice or anything. But, uh, but enough excuses for my slow times. You can see here as I pass the gate, oh, lap number one has triggered. One of the features that I have requested is the ability to freeze the timer when you trigger a new lap because you can see that the time immediately resets. Now you can see uh, the third from the left on the top is the fastest lap so far, but if you don't beat your previous lap time, so for example here, I'm going to pass through its did not see, I didn't beat my time and I don't know what my last lap was. So one of the features that I believe uh, that Red Rotor has expressed that they're gonna add is that when you pass, oops, missed that gate. When you pass the, the, the start finish line to trigger a new lap, it actually will freeze the last lap time for a couple seconds to give you a chance to glance down and see what your last lap time was. So that if you didn't beat your fastest lap, then you can at least see how close you got. There, There's some dis debate to be had over how this compares to systems like iLapse, which use a laptop. And I think they're two different systems. The iLapse is great if you're gonna run a course with a bunch of racers on the track uh, and you need to keep track of all their times because with iLapse, the laptop records the times and then at the, you know, at the end of the race, you just have all the racers' times right there. With the ROSD system, the copter records the times. So what that means is that it's very, it is very easy for a pilot to add a transponder to their ROSD and know what their times are. But if you're a race organizer, you would need to get the times from each pilot's DVR. And if the pilots were to power their copter down without showing you the time, the time is just gone. So I think for a race organizer, uh, the, the something like the iLAP system where you have a laptop recording the times is better. But for an individual pilot or a small club uh, who wants to practice and record times easily, I think the ROSD system is great. It is way cheaper to get into than an iLAP setup uh, and requires a whole lot less infrastructure. You don't have to bring a laptop or whatever with you to run the, the transponder. You just set the uh, infrared emitter on, a, on an air gate and then uh, you put the transponder on your copter and you're ready to go whether you're in a field or up on a mountain or, or just anywhere you want to be. Another advantage of the ROSD system is that it has had the feature added uh, where you can have multiple start-finish gates. So for example, you could set up two gates 300 feet apart in a field and you could do speed runs between them like drag racing. So that's something that I think would be very difficult to do with a laptop-based system like iLAP since the laptop has to have a, uh, a connection, I think, to each of the start-finish gates. And that would be, you'd have to run a really long line really long wire. Whereas in this case, you just have the transponder on your copter. It registers the first pass, it registers the second pass, and it tells you the time between them. And that could be useful if you know the gates are, you know, 250 feet apart, then it's easy to convert that into miles per hour when you do the runs between them. I tried to do some of these runs with just uh, some poles, some PVC poles standing on the ground, and I found that it didn't work very well. Uh, you really do need to mount these on an air gate because you have to get relatively close to the uh, emitter to trigger the laps. But uh, but other than that, I, I had a great time playing with this. Uh, as long as I hit the gate, it triggered. I had no false triggers, and I think this is going to be a really exciting product. Whenever it finally starts shipping, I don't even think it's shipping yet. It's still under pre-order, right? Red Rotor, when is this going to ship? I know everyone's going to ask me, and I don't know. Well, that's the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, looking forward to this product hitting the streets. Uh, I think it's a pretty cool product, and I think you will enjoy it too.